Thank you so much for joining us online today as we hear a special message from City Center Church, where we exist to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And hey, if God is using these messages to impact your life, would you please let us know? You can send an email to mystory@citycenterchurch.com. If this message is a blessing to you, would you please consider partnering with us financially? You can do so by hopping online at citycenterchurch.com slash give and select the best option that works for you. It's only your giving and your generosity that continues the message of the gospel for Jesus Christ. So get out your notebooks and Bibles and get ready for a life-changing message from the word of God. What, if I, what about if I told you, and I want you to think about it, what about if I told you you can live an unoffended life? I mean, think about it. I didn't, I didn't say you wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't have offense, but you could live unoffended. Everything that happens to you no longer dwells in you. Why? Because there ain't room for doubt and faith in the heart. Come on. All right. Let's. Let me give you a little passage here in Proverbs. We'll just go to the vault of wisdom. Then we're going to jump back and worship. Then we're going to pray the glory in. Well, it's already actually here. We're just going to, listen, we're going to pray the junk out of your life and believe and stand with you if that's okay. But Proverbs 79, check this out. Love overlooks the mistakes of others. Do we, do we not need a, a baptism of love right now? God, may the love of John. My prayer is may the flood of the love of Jesus overwhelm and saturate the soul of America. That's the only thing that's going to get us through. And listen, you've heard me say before, I'm not going to touch on anything right now, but the fact is so many people are just hurt and going through things. The love of Jesus, which covers a multitude of sins and removes fear. What's the two things right now that are overwhelming this nation? Sin and fear. Well, what's going to get us through? The love of Jesus. Love overlooks the mistakes of others. So they can hurt you, I forgive you. Say things against you, I forgive you. That's tough. That's why you need faith. But dwelling on the failures of others devastates friendships. I've seen more things done to the kingdom of God in the last four months. Because we want to, instead of picking up love, which forgives, we right here want to dwell on the failures. Well, I've never seen that side of them. Jesus didn't. He still died for them. I want you to think about that. Before you ever defriend somebody, unfriend somebody, overlook somebody, discard somebody, shelf somebody, Jesus saw everything they would do and you did, and he still came. Think about that and then put that in your pipe. Well, maybe not smoke it. But anyway, the fact is, think about it. The love of Jesus. Think about this phrase. All all eight people that are here right now. Think about this phrase. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but what? Your words will never hurt me. How awesome that would be if that statement wasn't true. Because the fact is, uh, wounds are more often easier to heal than the words by a brother or sister that has created an offense in a heart. I've seen doctors and specialists reset the craziest of breaks. And yet one word from 25 years ago by a mom or a dad or an individual or someone from a church service or whatever. And here we are still carrying around something. And we look together. We, I mean, we, boy, they, they don't walk with a limp. Oh, but you should see their soul. They don't have migraines. Oh, but you should see their heart. They're hurt and even offended. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 144 that happy are they whose God is the Lord. Okay, so go here with me real quick. You know, we, 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 it's amazing when you begin to read the number one killer of so-and-so is this. And, and there's stats out for, for you know, everything. Between the ages of 18 and 34, the number one killer of this individual is this. And you're like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to get outside of that age bracket. The number one killer of men, the number one killer of women. And, and so we talk about the number one killers of, of people. But you know what, do you realize that far before hearts and many people ever stop beating that there's millions of people already dead around us? Because offense is the number one killer of happiness in the soul. You're alive, but you're dead. And I would just, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm, I don't know why this went in my notes. 
over, overcome a little bit with emotion. I've done this before, like when we talked about giving or whatever. It's something that it's, you know, counselors were practicing. I, I, I find it even in Scripture, but it's called representational repentance. Listen, if you need me on behalf of someone, you know, put right now, father, mother, someone from another race, someone from across the street, someone across the aisle, someone in this church, someone in another area of your life, if they have hurt you, I'll, I'll, on behalf of them, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive them. Would, would you please forgive me standing in the gap of someone that hurt you? The person that abandoned you, overlooked you, violated you. I'm sorry. And then what you now do with that apology, by faith is up to you. But listen, you don't need someone to ask forgiveness for you to grant forgiveness. You grant forgiveness whether they ever ask for it so you can be free. So you can break out of the jail of offense. Proverbs 18, 21, and I'll tell you this is why, why offenses and just being offended and, and hurt is ruining so many hearts and so many lives and so many relationships. It's right here, Proverbs 18, 21. Your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life and the talkative person will reap the consequences. One offense has the ability to ruin a day, a month, a year, or a life. You don't think about it. Go, go, go to a bar. Well, most of them are shut down right now, and I don't know if you should go there even if they're open. But the fact is, go to a bar around one. You'll find someone if you look hard enough. Head down because that's what shame and discouragement does. Can I have another one? And their speech begins to be slower a little bit. You'll talk to them. What's going on? And they'll act happy because most people, that's what alcohol does, it numbs. But you talk to them enough and they keep, let me tell you something, 15 years ago, and they, even with an inebriated mind, the hurt. I was, that's what, that's what just continues to break my heart. Because I'm, I'm just a gospel guy. I'm, I'm a crazy optimist. I hate seeing people hurt when they have the ability to override that because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Because regardless of your age, your wealth, your career, your relationship status, your spiritual maturity, no one, and I want you to hear me, nobody is exempt from offenses. Now, if you live offended, different ballgame. Nobody is exempt from being from offenses. You, you may be offended before this night's over. You may be offended right now that I'm talking about being offended. You're like, Matt, will you just move on? Talk about something else. Well, okay, well, forgive me for that. You have a choice by faith. Every day to sit between maybe two thieves like someone I, I'm familiar with named Jesus. And someone still, and their very last breath is cursing you and blaming you and hurting you. And you have the ability by faith to say, forgive them. They know not what they do or they wouldn't do it because they're just too hurt. See, part of the human nature lies in wanting other humans to think highly of us. That's why the Bible says, cast down every high and lofty thing that attempts to exalt itself against the true knowledge of God. Well, who wants the true knowledge of God? The true nature of God. Well, what's the true nature of God? It lives in you. It's called sonship. Anything that tries to exalt itself against, you're incredible, you're amazing, you're, um, you're unbelievable, you're exceptional, you're favored, you're forgiven. If you try to get in the way of that, forgive you, but can't go with you. Because I'm not going to allow that to offend me more than what's already blessed me. Well, that's good and tweetable. I refuse to allow anything to offend me higher and more than what's already blessed me called the Spirit of Jesus. See, we want everybody to like us. We, you know, we, we, want, we want the affection of the opposite sex. Uh, we want people to think that we're good and, and, and wealthy and, 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 and ultimately happy. And, and we want people to think we have it all together, which is why we never want our kids to say anything loud in the store. Got it! I want them to think I'm a good parent. We get embarrassed when people see the real us that really takes place behind the four walls that nobody sees. We want everyone to see us not fight with our spouse. Our kids never back talk us. We want, everyone, we want to always look good. Can I just tell you in the eyes of Father, in the eyes of Abba, you already look good. But most of us are battling hurt because we've been offended by something and someone. 
over the course of our life or maybe even recently. Listen, we've all had a moment, all of us have had a moment where somebody said something that made us feel underappreciated, insignificant, overlooked. Because it happens. It may have been a sexist remark. It may have been a racial slur. It maybe was a Facebook comment. It maybe was the fact that your own mom and dad didn't comment on your, in fact, we were talking with someone the other day. And, and, and they're telling us that their 20-year-old son came to them. Why didn't you like my Instagram post? I, I mean, it, it, again, everyone has, again, you know, is going to be offended, but it's your right whether or not you live offended. You have to give that to Jesus. It may have been the fact that you're overlooked for a job you are highly qualified for. It may have been the fact that you know it, no one else can recognize it, but you know for a fact that maybe your parents treated your siblings better. Or maybe your dad or your mom who married someone else and you're in a blended family actually treated their stepson or their stepdaughter more than even even better than you and you're the biological um, seed of them. That's hard. One of the worst things to ever get over. And this is what's tough because you you honestly never know the, and this is what I've seen so much as of late. I, 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 I said this the other day. Everyone on social media has become um has, be, has become um, MDs of the, just, just really social media MDs. What do you mean, Matt? Everybody apparently all of a sudden knows, you know, the heart of an individual. No one truly knows the heart of an individual, only God. And sometimes the mo- one of the most difficult things to get over is when someone unintentionally hurt you, and they don't even know they hurt you, but you think they did, and here you are holding on to something that they don't even know that they did to you. Or maybe it might even be the fact that someone said something to you about someone you love and even and living under the umbrella of as a protective parent or a protective spouse or, or a protective friend or loved one here you are hurting because they hurt someone very near and dear to you but I'm going to wrap it up with what I started with do you realize it's possible to live unoffendable I didn't say invincible I didn't say superman I didn't say superwoman Why? Oh, you'll bleed. Because Jesus bled. And he said, oh, son, daughter, they persecuted me. They're going to persecute you, so let me just give you some good news. Well, that's not good news, but I just want to let you know anyway. They persecuted Jesus. You'll be persecuted. You will bleed. Um, You'll be cut again. You will be hurt again. You will be offended again. You'll be overlooked again. It's what happens in life. People that are hurt hurt people. But you have the ability to live unoffendable. You have the ability to live an unoffended life by letting Jesus in the, in the shield of faith as an, listen, the authority of the believer, that's something we need to teach more on and we're probably going to do that before the year's up. If you knew everything you need in life is actually already deposited within you but you have, by faith, have to raise up either that shield or put on those shoes of, of peace or you have to raise up your sword of the spirit or you have to put on the helmet of salvation. Whatever you do, You have to choose to cast the care, cast the issue, cast the offense to Jesus. And here's the good news. And I want you to think about this before we sing one more song of worship. This next week, tomorrow, could be the greatest day and the greatest week of your life if you choose by faith to let go of offense and begin to live in freedom that Jesus has already promised you. Jesus guaranteed you hurt in this world, but he also promised you peace in this world. Why? Because he's not the prince of chaos. Read your Bible, Isaiah 9. He's the prince of peace. And when you have the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, all offense, you can live an overcoming life, and you can have victory, which is what they sing about. And that can be your song every day until he either comes and gets you or calls you home blessings.